Good morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with My brothers and sisters, as we gather together this morning on this feast day of St. John Chrysostom, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, who will that the Bishop St. John Chrysostom should, should be illustrious by his wondrous eloquence and his experience of suffering. Grant us, we pray, that instructed by his teachings, we may be strengthened by the example of his invincible patience. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all of the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of the one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. Now you are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be, first, apostles, second, prophets, Third, teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do not speak, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret. Strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. The word of the Lord. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are. His people, the flock he tends. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. For he is good, the Lord, whose kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We are his people, the sheep of his flock.
excuse me. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Hallelujah, ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus journeyed to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd accompanied him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity for her and said, said to her, Do not weep. He stepped forward and touched the coffin. At this the bearers halted, and he said, Young man, I tell you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, exclaiming, A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. This report about him spread through the whole of Judea and in all the surrounding regions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise well, that was nice, wasn't it? The Lord shows up and he can change anything that's going on in the midst of this moment where, again, the mother is the widowed and he just places his hand on the coffin and raises up this person. Now let's understand something. Eventually this person is going to, what? Still end up going to God. But not at that time. Because again, th things happen in their own time, their own place, when it's supposed to, as it were, even when we don't have the totality of the view of everything. And that's sometimes hard for us, to not have the totality of the view of something. And yet on this feast day of St. John Chrysostom, we talk about somebody who sometimes didn't have the fullness of the view of what he was doing, but he had to engage in very tough conversations. Because from a young age, he was given a, what we would call in today's day and age, a first-class education. He was given all the best teachers, all the best things. They wanted, his parents wanted him to be really a leader, a politician of some kind. Well, guess what John did? He took that and he became a priest. And after 11 years of priesthood, he got elevated to the Episcopate and became Bishop of Constantinople. You ever heard of that city? It's modern-day Istanbul. It used to be the, uh, the capital of the eastern end of the Roman Empire. And it was a place of a lot of political intrigue, if you will. There was an empress that was out there as well, who didn't always, again, see eye to eye with the church. Well, St. John being St. John, he didn't pull punches. We always talk about, oh, we got to be careful of all these things. You know, you don't want to mix the church and the state together. Well, if it's a moral issue, guess what? St. John was going there. And that last name that he had, Christentum, you know what it means? Golden mouth. In other words, he was quite an order. He could really kind of, you know, give a run there and speak very powerfully in the midst of everything. So when the empress, a woman named Eudoxia, basically had some, shall we say, public scandal that was starting to erupt, St. John called her out. And for his efforts, St. John got banished out of, the, out of the area of Constantinople as the bishop into, again, a neighboring uh, country. And he suffered greatly. He suffered many, many different trials during the course of his lifetime and it was not an easy road for him, because it wouldn't be the only time he'd get exiled 
for doing what is right. For us as Christians, living in this modern age, and again, trying to do our best in the midst of everything, if we want to see these miracles, these powerful works of God, are we prepared to allow ourselves to be the instrument in the hand of our Lord, knowing that it may indeed cost us something, that we may indeed have to carry our cross to do what he's asking us to do. Because we all have a great gift that has been given to us through baptism and through confirmation. This gift to act in that manner of living out this Christian life to do these mighty deeds in the name of the Lord. Understanding that it's not about us, though. It's about our Lord working in and through us, where we, again, are the instrument in the divine hands of our Lord and of our Blessed Mother, who, again, is always interceding on our behalf, trying to help us to make that gift to God that much further. But to do that means it's going to cost you. It is not an easy journey. Christianity, if you look at the history of it, for at least those who are saints, you ever look at their lives? Not easy. Never easy. But yet, their reward is great, is it not? Do we trust that the reward will be great for us? That even in this life, if, it's, if it goes quicker, if we're not raised up like the... Uh, son coming out of name that Jesus places the hand on the coffin to raise him up, that even if that doesn't come to pass, that God's still holding out the infinite reality of eternity for us to participate in where our hearts will want for nothing. Because if we live in that hope, then we start to understand what St. Paul said. He said, I consider the sufferings of this age as nothing compared to the glory that is to come. The only way we get there is to open up there. Go to where you do not want to go. But that's the place that gonna, God's going to do his best work. Because out of that, in our hearts being converted to him, then we start to see the wonders of God in the midst of our world. With this in mind, let us ask for the intercession of this wonderful saint this morning as we pray. St. John Chrysostom, pray for us. Trusting in our Lord and Savior, we bring our prayers before him this day. That the baptized may overflow with spiritual gifts, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That apostles may sustain the church through faithful teaching, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That teachers, that prophets may summon the world to the path of God's merciful love and justice, we pray to the Lord. That teachers may nurture the minds of those entrusted to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord that through the intercession of St. John Chrysostom, our hearts may be converted, converted more fully to the Lord, that we may serve him as he desires, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the faithful may bear up the dead with songs of thanksgiving, we pray to the Lord. As we lift up Father Dennis Lemieux in the prayer of this liturgy on his 18th anniversary of ordination, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord and the silence of our own hearts.
pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, transform our hearts from the inside out, that we may be the instruments in your hand, serving you as you desire, especially through the intercession of St. John Chrysostom and all the angels and saints in heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the divine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present in commemoration of St. John Chrysostom be pleasing to you, O God. For taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as all in the festival of St. John Chrysostom, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching. Keep her safe and answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, that we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion at Vaughan. We proclaim Christ crucified, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O oh merciful God, that these mysteries we have received as we commemorate St. John Chrysostom may confirm us in your love and enable us to be faithful in confessing your truth. Through Christ our Lord. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you, God. It's a great day, everyone.